just got released on the Epic Games launcher, so let's go ahead and see what's going on. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. As if they're about to say something, but never do. house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. Wow, how they even get up there to build it like that? Wow. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. I asked Edie once about the dragon in the pond. She said it had killed her husband. I was six. It seemed like an odd joke to me even then. Now, as a 17 year old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. Hey, look, a neat little kayak. I wonder what happened that made them leave. This house 
house looks so lived in. Or out the garage, at least. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years. I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how only one restaurant would deliver to our house, so we had Chinese a lot. Or how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. Things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. It's kind of weird, everything's all sealed off. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. 
Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. Well, that's kind of cute. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. My Halloween candy was all gone. That's so sad. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. I kept eating and eating. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark. to the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. I wanted fat, juicy seals.
everything had changed. Now I was a monster and I smelled people everywhere. Closer and closer. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. Huh. Well, I think that's a very fine stopping point, and thanks a lot, Molly. Wow. 